Welcome back. So first up this week, uh, Jeff got these two uh, elevator plugs um, coated in uh, putty. And so there's the first one going up on the machine. And this is um, the one for the lower skin for the elevator. So there's plenty of putty on there, so no problems with that one. And away it goes. So the other one is uh, sitting next to it. So that one's ready to go uh, once the first one's done. And as I mentioned last week, Keith is back. So um, Keith and Brian both back, and Keith's doing um, the thing he likes the most. Well, I'm not sure if that's the case, but anyway, he's um, all set on trimming a bunch of different molds that have been sort of uh, piling up. So he's outside uh, working on that. And here's Brian and Zach working on uh, uh, creating the foam for the bracing for one of these uh, rudder molds that's... Uh, Actually, not quite finished yet. Still needs the heavy weight on it, but they're getting a jump on the mo on the bracing. And here we are with a um, little bit further along and switched over to the ball mill just to finish the uh, sort of concave transition there on the flange. And the rest of it's all already done and uh, came out pretty nicely. And the guys are putting on the heavy weight layers for um, one of these remaining uh, rudder molds. So, as you can see. Just wetting down the glass there. And here's that lower elevator plug, so that one's now finished. A um, couple little touch-ups needed there, but that's um, the usual when there's sort of finicky edges and things like that. But anyway, came off nicely. And here's the one for the upper skin, uh, just about to get underway here. So uh, it takes about uh, a couple of hours just to run all the flat mill passes on this. Or maybe a bit less actually, yeah. And then uh, a little bit longer uh, just to switch over to the bore mill and do those transitions. So I was actually in on the weekend on Saturday and uh, hooked up this uh, heat exchanger there that's going to run uh, water that's sitting in a big 55 gallon drum out the back. So um, on Monday evening I r uh, fired up the engine so there's a pump that's going to pump it and there's a filter to filter and make sure we don't put any junk in the pump or in the... Uh, are in the heat exchanger and so I haven't fired it up yet I was just waiting for the engine to warm up um, and then those hoses just go in this 55 gallon drum full of water so uh, there's the readout there or the display for them on the Motec software and again it's just idling just sort of warming up there and uh, I really wanted to see how well um, this heat exchanger was going to work so I was interested to see how it worked out so anyway, a little bit further on and I've got it running up here to about 2300 uh, rpm to a 20 uh, about 2300 rpm and uh, actually working really good and I turned on the the um, the pump there to run the water through the heat exchanger and immediately um, it was putting you know much colder water into um, into the return on the engine um, so it actually works really really well and I ended up running it for about 35 minutes and it stabilized nicely um, even at, at a higher power setting you'll see in a minute there 2600 almost 2700 rpm and the temperature the oil temperature was basically stable and it was only running about um, eight pounds of boost total um, which is not you know a lot of load but the uh, heat exchanger was working really well and the one downside was that where I put the um, the fuel line hoses into the uh, 55 gallon tank they were actually both at the top of the tank so only the top of the tank was uh, was getting warmed up so I'll show you in a little bit here uh, my fix for that uh, but anyway it's, it looks like it's going to actually work out really well um, using the fuel in the tanks on the aircraft you know to uh, cool the engine um, anyway and back to the wiring here you can see I've hooked up the all the gear uh, indication LEDs and so up the top there you've got the three LEDs which is obviously nose gear and the two main gear left and right and then down the bottom there that's actually the lever um, for the gear switch and which also lights up as well and I'm in the process here while you know while you're looking at this I'm, I'm actually connecting and disconnecting um, what would be sort of the magnetic switches that we're going to use on the gear that um, will indicate whether the gear is uh, you know locked up or locked down and how this one works is um, basically you have uh, if it's all up then you have three blue lights um, if there's any sort of um, gear sort of that's in motion or just stopped or not locked all the way down then you have red lights and flashing red 
and then when they're all down um, you have three greens there and also the handle um, the gear handle goes green so it's kind of like um, quite a bit of redundancy in there so you really know what's going on and you know if one of the LEDs goes out you've still got the handle there to show you so anyway you'll see more of that later but anyway that's all wired up now and after Keith finished trimming off this particular uh, mold um, the guys got it waxed up pretty quickly and Jeff sprayed some primer in there and uh, got that one ready to lay up that part and this is the sort of extension lower cowling extension um, and you'll see later when that gets fitted to the fuselage and uh, here the guys are again working on another one of these um, molds there to get the um, the bracing all set up for that Zach's just mixing up some five minute to glue it down yeah. and here Devin's working on uh, putting down the heavyweight layers on this uh, mold for the upper straight uh, flanges that we need and here's Keith this time he's already trimmed the edges on this uh, rudder mold and now he's there with the belt sander just uh, smoothing off where he cut everything off there so uh, yeah he kind of digs working on that stuff doesn't mind at all he does a good job so super happy to have him and Brian back on and things are sort of speeding up again having the extra manpower which is great and Jeff's about halfway through laying down the carbon fiber for uh, this uh, lower cowling um, part as you can see we've already got a layer or yeah at least one layer in there and uh, he's just lining it up there and running it running it on the 45 um, which as you know how you have to do all this stuff to make sure it's uh, you know meets the design criteria for um, the strength that we need and I know I've talked about the guys uh, hot wiring the foam there to um, get a nice level surface on there so how they do it is put the straight edges there and you see they clamp to the table and then they're just running that wire there which has a current running through it and so it heats up and just pulling it through there and it, it um, cuts through the foam as it melts it and uh, here's that part so uh, Jess finished laying that up and it's uh, under vacuum now and so hopefully um, maybe tomorrow or uh, Thursday that'll be ready um, to be trimmed it'll probably be ready to come out tomorrow but I'm not sure if you'll trim it yet it may, may let it uh, set up for one more day to cure uh, anyway so we'll see how that fits once that's done and there's a couple more molds there that now finish with the heavyweight layers on there so they just need uh, the bracing that was the one there that they were cutting the bracing already and this is the one that they were laying up the the bracing uh, earlier so getting through the last of all these uh, rudder ones and uh, so we just basically just have the elevator ones to do and the, this one's finished just needs to have some bracing put on there as well and here are the uh, those pressure bulkhead doors um, that Jeff created last week so actually what he's done here is laid up a couple more layers on there because we decided to uh, change things up a little bit and I'll explain more about that later on why he did that and the guys are uh, sanding now on these uh, elevator plugs both of them finished now and lastly here's my fix for making sure that the uh, the water gets um, used correctly in this 40, uh, 55 gallon uh, drum so I bought a bit of brake line here and cut an opening there about three inches up and then crimp the end so this uh, putting this in the tank there means it'll pull the water from the bottom of the tank which is where the cold water is and then the other line there is the return and that's where the hot water will come back in so we'll get a nice um, good flow of, of cold water from the bottom uh, anyway I didn't get a chance to run that again because I need a new filter the other one got pretty dirty uh, for the first run but I will be running it again uh, before the end of the week and I'll have an update for you on that uh, on the weekend so that's our update for the first half of this week and thanks again for watching